Now that you have connected and excited the virtual laser, it's time to focus on the light sensor. In real life, the sensor looks like this. And in Tinkercad, it looks like this. The light sensor is a simple voltage divider circuit that uses a 10,000 ohm fixed resistor, shown here, and a variable photoresistor, shown here, to split the voltage coming into the circuit. And here is what the fixed resistor and the photoresistor look like in the real world. As its name suggests, the photoresistor will change its resistance according to how much light hits its surface. Here, the light sensor is connected to a digital ohmmeter, which reads the resistance of the device. As you can see, when it is flooded with bright light, the sensor's resistance drops. In darker conditions, its resistance increases. As you will learn later in the course, the voltage across any resistor is directly proportional to its resistance. It is the voltage across the photoresistor that will be read by your microcontroller. In fact, voltage is the only thing that can be read by microcontrollers and computers. So, by changing the amount of light on the photoresistor, we can write code to measure that change. In this way, we'll be able to detect the presence or absence of the laser's bright beam. Cool, huh? Let's examine the light sensor voltage divider circuit in Tinkercad. Notice the input voltage of the circuit is 5 volts, taken from the Arduino's power pin, and this is connected to one end of the fixed resistor. In the real world, it is impossible to plug two wires into one port, which is one reason why we will employ the sensor shield for this project. Fortunately, we are not so limited in the virtual world. Notice the circuit is completed with the black wire connecting the photoresistor to one of the ground pins on the microcontroller. The yellow signal wire connects the junction between the two resistors and the signal pin labeled A0. When you arrive in the lab, you will connect your light sensor with a three-conductor cable to pin A0 on the actual microcontroller board. Again, Match the yellow or white signal wire to the S row, the red power wire to the V row, and the black ground wire to the G row. You should make notes of this in your notebook. The pins labeled with the A prefix are so-called analog pins, which means our microcontroller can read a range of voltages between 0 and 5 volts with a precision of 4.9 millivolts. These voltages are displayed as integer numbers running from 0 to 1023, as shown. When using a light sensor, analog pins allow us to measure a range of lighting conditions that we might describe as very bright, sort of bright, dim, or dark. Notice the sensor values grow smaller as the conditions become brighter. Let's use Tinkercad to learn how to program your microcontroller to make ambient light readings using the analog read command. If it is not already, open the Tinkercad circuit template that you were working on before. Again, this link is in the description below. Click on the code button and create a header comment at the top of the code window with the name of the sketch, your name, and the date as shown here. Notice the sketch has the usual setup and loop functions, but they are empty and ready for us to add code. Remember that all our code must be contained within the curly braces for each function. Let's first create a global variable to hold the pin number of our light sensor. Recall that global variables are defined above the setup function and can be used anywhere in the program. Pin numbers are integers so we start with a declaration with the int data type. Then we give it a name such as light pin. You can name it anything you want, but for simplicity, I recommend that you stick with my naming convention. Recall, variable names must not contain spaces or special characters and cannot start with a number. 
Finally, set the value to A0 and end the line with a semicolon as usual. Let's now focus on the setup function. Code here will run only once, and we will use the space to initialize the serial monitor and the pins for our light sensor. Because we will be printing data to the screen, enter the command serial.begin parentheses 9600 close parentheses semicolon as shown. Be sure that your code is contained within the curly braces. This code will set the communication rate between your laptop and your microcontroller to 9600 bits per second. Type this in exactly as I entered it. The S must be capitalized and all other letters must be lowercase. Next, we should tell the microcontroller that our sensor pin will be used as an input device. That is, we will use that pin to read data that is sent into the microcontroller from the sensor. Do that with the command pin mode open parentheses light pin comma input close pin semicolon. Again, enter this just as I have, paying attention to which letters are uppercase and which are lowercase. And don't forget the semicolon at the end. Finally, Mac computers are a little slow to open serial ports, so if you use a Mac, Add a 250 millisecond delay to give your computer time to establish the connection. Before proceeding, check that the code contains no errors by clicking on the Start Simulation button. If there are errors, carefully compare your code to mine and make any necessary corrections. So far, the only thing this code does is get everything ready behind the scenes, so you will not see the code do anything just yet and that's okay. If the code compiles, you are ready to move on. All Arduino sketches must have two functions, setup and loop. These are created for you automatically when you create a new sketch. Let's now make our own function that will continually read and print the sensor's values to the screen. To do this is easy. First, scroll down to the very, very, very bottom of the program and add a couple of blank lines below the bottommost curly brace. Then add the line void print sensor open parentheses close parentheses and open curly brace exactly as I have entered it here. Hit enter a couple of times and close the function with a second curly brace. Move your cursor so it is between the two brackets. Because we want to spit out sensor readings forever, let's make an infinite loop like so. Enter while, parentheses, true, close parentheses, and then open a curly brace. Hit enter again a few more times and add the closing curly brace. Move your cursor so it is once again between the two braces. Next, create a new integer variable named light reading like so. The value given to this new variable will be the raw data as read by analog pin A0, which is connected to our voltage divider light sensor. The command to read data from any analog I.O. pin is analog read. So type this as I have done, analog read, open parentheses. The argument, or that thing in parentheses, of the analog read function is the desired pin number of your sensor. Recall that the signal pin from our sensor was plugged into A0. So we could finish the command simply by entering A0, close parentheses, semicolon. This would work just fine, but it's not very elegant. Recall that we created a global variable at the top of the sketch on line three named light pin, and we set that to A0. So let's use that variable in our print sensor function by replacing the numeric literal A0 with the light pin variable name. Be sure you enter this command between the curly braces of the while loop, which is contained inside the curly braces of the print sensor function. 
There are several reasons programmers prefer to use the variable name here. First, light pen is easier to decipher than A0. Second, we are going to use this command many times throughout the sketch. So if we decide to move our sensor to, say, another pen, we will only need to edit line 3 to change the pen number for each analog read command used. Like I said, it's elegant. All that's left to do is print the raw data to the screen. Recall this is done with a serial.println statement like this. Don't confuse the light pin variable, which does not change, with the light reading variable, which will change according to the lighting conditions. Compile and run the code now. If you get errors, fix them. If the code compiles, do you remember how to see the output from the serial monitor? Recall it is here at the bottom of the code window. Open it now and... Are you surprised that nothing is appearing on the screen? Don't be. If we examine the setup and loop functions, we see that our new homemade print sensor function is not being invoked or called in either of those functions. Arduino first runs the code in setup, and then it runs the code in loop. Just like your teacher warning you to do something, they call your name to get your attention. It's the same in code. We must call our new function to get it to run. We do this simply by typing the name of the function we want to run. So stop the simulation and call our new function at the bottom of the setup function like so. Print sensor, then a set of empty parentheses, and finish with a semicolon. Make sure you place the call after the serial.begin command and in between the curly braces of the setup function. Now, run the simulation again, and you should see raw data quickly scroll up the serial monitor. Ensure the sensor is working by adjusting the amount of light impacting the solar cell. Do this in Tinkercad by clicking on the photoresistor, and then adjust the sliding bar to alter the ambient light, like so. If the data is scrolling up too fast to read, Add a 100 millisecond delay. First, stop the simulation, then enter the delay command after the print statement, like so. Run the code to ensure you are better able to read the data. Increase the delay as needed. Experiment by changing the lighting conditions. Slide the photoresistor to full brightness and note the sensor returns a raw value of 17. At full darkness, the sensor will read 877. Of course, these readings will differ in the lab. Simulate a pendulum swinging through the beam by changing the conditions from light to dark to light. Have some fun. In the lab, even when the pendulum fully blocks the laser beam, the sensor will pick up some of the ambient light in the room, so we do not expect it to ever read fully dark. As the pendulum just begins to block the beam, the photoresistor will read some semi-dark value. Let's pretend this raw threshold value is, say, 60. In the next video, we will want to make use of this threshold value, so let's define and store it at the top of our sketch as a global variable with the name light threshold, like so. Note the comment to the user. When you get to the lab, you will alter this light threshold value according to your measured light values. In the next video, you will learn how to set up the physical equipment and run it with the code you've just written. See you soon!